I was going to do a big scripted edited video about E1M1 tool assisted speedrunning and how that compares to the human run, but then after realizing that that video would have been like an hour long if I went into all the detail I wanted to go into, I thought I'd go into, I'd have a bit more of a, a casual unscripted discussion about E1M1 tool assisted speedrunning. I won't get too in depth as to how a lot of the tricks are performed, but I'll explain what's going on in these runs to really differentiate them from the, the human runs. So. Eight seconds is uh, the human record, and seven second TASs exist. And there's a lot of YouTube comments sort of wondering, well, how, ca how come a TAS can do seven seconds? What's going on here? And more importantly, can a human do the things that the TAS is doing in order for a human to get a seven second run? The, uh, the short version of this video is eight seconds is the human limit, seven seconds is possible if you use tools, seven seconds is only possible if you use tools. So I'll start by playing Depravity's 8.91 second UV speed record, the fastest human run uh, as of making this video. Good run. Now the 7.74 uh, the second tool assisted run. Fair bit different bit frantic, a lot more going on. So this tool assisted run was made by Alps and myself, Alps being a different tool assisted speedrunner. And luckily, because I was one of the creators of it, I get to uh, share with you what was going on in the uh, in the minds of the creators at the time. So a human would normally run between these two pillars in order to get to the first door as quickly as possible, but we're going to run over to the side here because we're going to try to get to this wall as quickly as possible because we want to do a wall run against this wall. First, we're going to hit this barrel though. We get a bit of a wall run against the barrel and because it's a thing and things have very strange properties in Doom, we can also maintain um, momentum towards the wall. So once we get to the wall, we can wall run along it up until we get to this point. At this point, this has been a perfectly straight north wall and at this point it becomes a little bit diagonal. Now this massively changes how we're able to wall run against the wall. If it's a straight wall and we're just wall running against it, we're maintaining contact the entire time and our distance traveled per frame is doubled for every frame. A diagonal wall run is more like a long chain of bumps against the wall. And because collisions in Doom are really weird, sometimes it kills kills all our momentum, sometimes it gives us more, sometimes it like doubles or triples our distance traveled. So using tools, we can maximize how good this otherwise really annoying and seemingly random behavior is. So we're able to get a fair bit of speed and cover quite a bit of distance very quickly against that diagonal wall. Next thing that's going to happen is we're going to do a uh, an elastic collision against this next wall. So currently we are traveling north and have a northern momentum and the elastic collision is going to take some of that northern momentum and redirect it into eastern momentum, which is good because we want to travel east because this door is over to the east. But it's not going to take all of the northern momentum and transfer it. We're going to have a bit of northern momentum and a bit of eastern momentum. So we're going to be going diagonally, which is good because once again, we want to do a diagonal wall run against this little bit of wall um, right after the elastic collision occurs. Then we're going to do a little bit of wall running here, and then we're going to open the door as quickly as possible. So even at 25% speed, all of that happens fairly quickly. Then we're going to run over to this side of the door and do a momentum preservation trick. We could do it over here, but then that would mean we'd have to run across this room. Not good. We want to minimize the distance we have to travel. So here, even though we appear to be stationary, if you look in the top left of the screen, you can see a bunch of figures. And the second one from the bottom, X, 13.823, that refers to our eastern momentum value. So when we run through this door, we're going to be traveling to the east. So we want that number to be uh, quite high. Additionally, because we're traveling east, another cool thing happens. We're going to get an eastern wall run against this little bit of gray wall. So that means we're going to be going from completely stationary to suddenly moving very, very quickly on the first possible frame that we can move through the door. After that, we're going to run over here against that blue wall, do a little bit of wall running there. Then after we get to this room, we want to get to this next door as soon as possible, and that necessitates as straight a line as we can possibly manage. So all of that seemingly random shooting we've been doing has been to manipulate the RNG so the enemies happen to move out of our way in the right way. We also want to get as many damage boosts as possible. So this was... Uh, <laughs> Thanks to Alps for dealing with a lot of this. Uh, it's, it's very annoying because once you um, get the, the enemy movement correct, then maybe you haven't gotten enough damage boosts and vice versa. So anyway, the end result was quite good. Very straight line. That shotgun had moved out of the way. Four damage boosts on the way to the next door. So by the time we get to the next door, we're going to do another momentum preservation trick. 
So this time we're maintaining southern momentum, and as soon as this door is open enough, we want to be traveling very, very quickly. We get two more damage boosts on the way to the next door, and then on this last door, we're going to do a momentum preservation again, except it's a different kind of momentum preservation trick this time. Instead of, uh, instead of maintaining momentum in one direction, we're going to maintain it going forward and to the right. So this way and this way. And put together, that means we're going diagonally, which is good because as soon as we pass through this door, we want to be traveling diagonally to get to the switch as soon as possible. So if we've got momentum pushing us in that direction, that's a good thing. So, beauty, 7.74 seconds. Now, so much of what just happened there just can't be done by a person. Instantly hitting a wall in exactly the right way, the right way to get a wall run, diagonal wall running, elastic collisions, three different kinds of momentum preservation tricks, not to mention all the, the luck required and enemies moving out of the way while getting four damage boosts and everything. It just, it's, it is far too much for a person to do. Not to mention, uh, tool assisted runs can use SR50 movement on turns, whereas regular runs cannot. If you don't know what that means, basically that just means that even aside from all the, all the technical jargon and stuff, tool assisted runs can just run faster. So putting them at a natural advantage. So I'll go into the No Monsters run, which is pretty much the same except with a couple of um, a couple of differences here. So this is what the, the point of view looks a bit more like. And then after we get to this bit, there is uh, no enemies to duck and weave out of and no damage boosts to get. So this means it's a very minor detail but it's quite important when you're actually making the task this changes the curve we can have going into this room quite a bit which seems like a minor detail but very important when it comes to optimization at this level so anyway um, we get to this next door and then we do the momentum preservation again and then something cool is going to happen here so this barrel we are going to shoot that and the explosion is going to push us towards this last door. Now, the explosion took quite a bit of our health and only saves one frame. So it certainly looks cool, but it's not nearly as helpful as, uh, as you'd probably think, unfortunately. And that's why um, we don't do that in the UV speed run as well. We just do not have enough health to get a good enough explosion to actually realistically save any time. So then once again, momentum preservation in two directions. Um, get to the exit switch as soon as possible. 7.8 seconds, where I believe the human record is, I want to say 8.74. Yeah, 8.74, I'm, I'm almost certain of it. Okay, so might as well talk about the, the max run while I'm here. So this is UV max, 18.97 seconds. The human record is 26.17, I think. So there's a difference. There's a there's a bigger difference here in the tool assisted run versus the human run than there was in the other two, and that's because this run has a lot more stuff going on. So we're going to run into this room, and first we're going to take two shots at this shotgunner, and then two shots at this shotgunner. Now, killing both of these shotgunners each in two shots. That's a one in eighty one chance, I believe. So, luckily the game just kind of uh, just kind of gave me that one. I didn't really have to work too hard to manipulate RNG or anything, thankfully. Um, so anyway, after killing this shotgun, we grab his shotgun and we start running out of the room. We have to kill these guys in one shot because any more than one shot is uh, too many shots. So here, um, once again, do a bit of diagonal wall running against this diagonal wall, elastic collision, diagonal uh, wall running here, open the door, except we're not going to do momentum preservation here. We're going to back up because we want to be able to shoot those two enemies under the door. So then after we do that, you'll recall in the at the end of the level we have a momentum preservation trick where we can run forward and to the right. Now we're actually going to do the same thing here against this wall because that means that as soon as we pass this wall we're going to be able to go like that. We want to move in this direction as quickly as possible because we want to get behind this shotgunner. So we want to do that because we can shoot this guy through this guy. 
Now, this one's the next guy we're going to kill, and we want to immediately after killing him do a wall run here. And so, sparing a lot of the fine details, this meant getting into a uh, fairly good position here to immediately hit the wall run. Uh, also, perfectly timing when I started running, not just on which frame to do it, but the exact running value on the first frame that I did run to get absolute maximum uh, distance possible. So, here we're trying to double up our kills as much as possible. So, in this next room, I didn't mention, by the way, when I shot through that shotgun to kill the other dude, I grabbed his shotgun to grab some more ammo. That's very important, otherwise we would be out and a lot of this stuff just wouldn't be possible. So kill these two in one shot. Keep on running. Kill those two in one shot. Open this door for reasons. Um, we want to shoot that barrel. Now it's going to kill this imp, it's going to blow up this barrel so it kills these two, and you'll also see that this shotgun is targeting me at the second, but the explosion is going to just tickle him, which is going to distract him and now he's not going to be targeting me anymore. So then as I run out of this room, I'm going to shoot through this shotgunner and I'm going to hit this barrel, which is going to kill these two. Well actually my shotgun blast is going to kill one of them, but the general effect is these three, three enemies are going to die in one shotgun shot. Now what happened here is I ran in here to trigger the secret and alert these two guys uh, so they move into a better position for me to kill them both in one shot a bit later on. So then I run out of here and um, hang on, I'll get into a bit of a better position. So, Alright, something very important just happened here. Normally, uh, so you run into that final room and this lift lowers and you can get into this little area, but also this lift here raises and lowers. So at the minute, it's already raising, which is bad. So what happens here, and this is what took the most time when building the demo, is I had to kill these guys. So this corpse is going to slide over the line that lowers the elevator right after the elevator reaches the top again. So then it lowers as soon as possible. So if you look at that elevator in the very back, that was an absolute nightmare to get done. But now, um, well, what you missed was I ran in there and I triggered this secret and I killed this bad guy. And anyway, here I'm getting ready to activate this secret. But getting that to happen with the with the right timing was so painful and it was uh, necessary to get an 18 second. So anyway. Got the secret, kill him at the same time. Going to kill this other imp here. Now I'm going to run forward, open this last door, because that closed by itself. Wasn't anything I could really do about that. Run back here, kill these two in one shot. Keep running, kill these last two enemies in one shot. So Then once again, that momentum preservation trick where I'm running both forward and to the right. And of course, when I'm in here, I'm going to kill the imp. Um, So, maximum kills, maximum secrets. Um, this run was also reality. I took no damage, and to be honest, um, that was completely uh, random. I I had no intention of it being a reality run, and that just kind of happened for me. So it's kind of to the point where I don't even feel like I can take credit for it because I didn't even notice it happened. But yeah, um, a, a human UV max run can get pretty good, but it's uh, it's fairly different. And a lot of the technical stuff that you can do here, once again, just can't be replicated by a person. I think it's a lot easier to convince you that 18 seconds can't be done by a person for UV max. But hopefully just going into a bit more detail about what's going on in the UV max TAS um, really emphasizes, once again, the, just the difference in potential between a tool-assisted run and a human run. The original plan was to break out X-Ray, the tassing program, and look at these uh, tool-assisted runs frame by frame and really break down a lot of the technical details of how to accomplish some of these tricks, like the, the instant wall runs, the diagonal wall runs, the momentum preservation tricks, and all that fun stuff. 
I, I figured that probably wouldn't be particularly interesting to a lot of people, but if anyone did want to see anything like that, whether it's for E1M1 or any other demo at all, really, um, certainly let me know. I'd, I'd love to share stuff like that. And uh, if there's any interest in it, then yeah, certainly just let me know.